Hey guys, and welcome back to uh, chapter four in our statistical methods of analysis. And we're going to take what we've been learning in chapters one, two, and three, and now we're going to apply it to some pictures and some graphs um, and see why these pictures are really worth a thousand words. All right, things you're going to learn is right there why is a picture worth a thousand words, um, how to create histograms, polygon, and other types of charts, um, and then different types of charts and their uses. Every chart is just used a little bit differently. Um, so we're going to go over some of that stuff. All right, so we're going to start here. Um, when describing a set of scores, you'll want to use two things. One, you're going to want to know um, what the middle of that data is. Your measure is a central tendency. Where is your mean? Where is your median? Where is your mode? Um, other one is measures of variability. How spread out are the things? Um, those are the two things you want to know. Um, it says, however, a visual representation of these two measures is much more effective than just looking at the numbers. Okay, and when you see the charts later on, you'll understand why visually it's easier to see. Okay, my means here on this set, my means here on this set. Um, really, pictures help us to better visualize what the data looks like. All right, here's uh, ten ways to create a great figure. Um, you need to look over them; they're important. I'm not going to go over them here, but key thing is if you follow these, you're going to always get good charts. You're going to get pictures that help you see the data points. All right, your frequency distribution. This is an important part of creating a good chart. We want to know how to distribute the data, how spread out things need to be. Um, we need to set an interval. Our interval is based on how big our data set is. Kind of a rule of thumb, I use 2, 5, 10, or 20 data points, and that's how I determine how big my interval is, depending on how spread out it is. If I have a lot of data points that are spread out from 0 to 100, I'm probably going to use a bigger interval like 20. Um, the largest interval always goes on top. That's a key thing. You're on, work on a number line in your first quadrant from 0 to whatever your largest number is, and that's how you're going to distribute your data. All right, so here we go. we got a histogram we're going to start drawing. Uh, we're going to start with class intervals along the x-axis. If you can see down here, it's 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, all the way up to 48 down here. In the middle, on the 2, on the 7, on the 12, the 17, there's little arrows. We're going to talk about those and midpoints. It's midpoints in every single one of your distributions and what they are. Um, if you look on the next slide right here, um, your midpoint's right here. It is halfway between your class interval of 0 to 4. Then you got 5 to 9. Halfway in between there is 7. 10 to 14 is 12, so on, so forth. Knowing that middle point is going to be very important when you're labeling these data sets. All right, so here's kind of how I would go about making a histogram to start with. I would have my interval 0 to 4, and I make a tally mark. If I have this many items in 0 to 4, I'd make a tally mark that goes up to that number. Notice I have two things from 5 to 9, four things from 10 to 14, and make tally marks around them. Tally marks are easy to work with because you miscount, you just erase one real quick. Um, if you put one in the wrong column, it's easy to move it. Um, if you're drawing the rectangles like I'm going to show you here in a second to start with, it's a lot more erasing. I would recommend doing this because it helps you to see what it looks like before you actually finish your picture. All right, so once we're done, right here, you got 0 to 4, notice a rectangle right there. We've filled in exactly how many things occurred, the frequency. So we had one thing from 0 to 4, we had two things from 5 to 9, we had four things from 10 to 14. The other thing that I told you back a couple slides ago about the midpoint, what's important about the midpoint is you could draw from midpoint to midpoint a line graph that will also visually represent this data. You want to use the midpoints on all these and then connect the dots. Um, it's a, just another type of picture that you'll be able to see. But if you use the midpoints, you get right here and it kind of looks like that. This is an important data thing we'll talk about later on in this class, but it kind of looks like it's normally distributed over the whole thing. Um, this is what a histogram would look like drawn by hand, the rectangles here, not the line. The line is just another example. It's our actually our polygon is if you want to 
know what it's called, it's called a polygon because it's got many different sides. But our histogram is all our rectangles added together to visually represent our data set. All right, so here's another type of um, frequency chart. This is a cumulative frequency. Again, we're using our midpoints of our data set and we're plotting the points and then we're connecting the dots. So you find your midpoint from zero to, from zero to four, it's two, you put a dot there on however many things you have in that data set. Go to five to nine, however many things you have there, put another dot. 10 to 14, put a dot, and you just play connected dots and it just shows you a line graph of what your data looks like. All right, so the next one, we're gonna talk about different types of frequency distributions. Distributions can be different in four different ways. Average value, uh, variability, skewness, and kurtosis. We're not gonna talk about kurtosis. It's a little bit more advanced than you'll need to get into. But four different ways your data can be different. All right, so we'll start here with the average value. Average value, as you learned in chapter two, is just your mean value. Your means, your middle, of your data sets can be different. So if you look at the first one, here's your low score, and it goes up here to your high score. Your average is different, but you go to average for the second data set, it's right here. These two data sets have different averages. So you have a different average value, your picture is gonna look different. We got variability. Um, if you look right in the middle, it has a line going up here for average. What variability is, as you learned in chapter three, is how close things are to the middle or the mean. So the closer things are to the mean, the steeper this curve is, and we're looking at distribution A here. It's saying that most of our data is right here, this close to the mean, and then it spreads out. On B right here, it says it's a little bit further apart, but it's not extremely spread out like C is. If you look at C right here, it's quite a bit more spread out. There's more variability in your data set. That means your things are spread out more. Um, so if you think of the distribution A and we got scores from 20 to 40, most of your scores in that data set are probably between 30 and 35 or 27 and a half and 32 and a half. If you go to B, it's probably between 25 and 35. C, it's probably all the way from about 22 to 38 and it's quite a bit more spread out and that's all these are represented. Uh, your last one is skewness. Now skewness just says, is most of your data um, on one side of the chart or is it on the other side of the chart? Right here, no skewness, this is called our normal distribution. Um, it just says that everything is evenly distributed on the bottom half of the mean and on the top half of the mean. Over here, distribution A is positively skewed. So our mean's still right here in the middle but most of our data is skewed to one side or the other. How do you know if it's positive? You look at the chart right here. Notice you've got a positive slope on this chart. Over here, distribution C, negative skewed. It's negatively, it's going in a negative direction. Um, it's just saying, how is our data laid out on the, on the graph? This is the one we'll work with the most. No skewness. You will see that in real life, you're either skewed to the left, skewed to the right, positively or negatively. All right, so just different cool ways that you can display data. You can do it by hand. You can do our histogram. You can do our polygon chart. Um, I think if you do this by hand, it looks great. If you use a piece of graph paper, um, I've had students color them before, have it all color coordinated. Um, but I would personally recommend doing it by hand. I'd use Excel. Excel gives you a clean picture. Um, it takes care of all the mistakes you might make and then your picture just looks a lot nicer when you're done. Other type is line graphs right here. Um, line graphs, you plot the point. So winter had seven things. Spring had eight things. You put a point there, connect the dots. Summer had, looks like five things. Connect the dot, fall had about three things, put a point, and you connect the dots. So, line graphs also, Excel will make great line graphs for you. Line graphs are very good at just representing how data is related. You can see right here, from winter to spring, there's a significant increase within from spring to summer, there's a big fall off. 
Um, so it's just a good way to represent data points. Another one a lot of you guys have probably seen is a pie chart. Pie chart just breaks out 61% white, 25% black, 14% other, um, just depending on what your data set is. It helps you to look at maybe in your classroom, A's, B's, C's, how are your students' grades, what percent of your students are getting A's, B's, C's, you know, we'd have D's and hopefully not very many F's on this chart also, but it's a good way to look at data. You can look at ISAT scores, you put them in groups, proficient, advanced, basic, below basic. You can look at what percentage your kids are there. All right, so a couple glossary terms you need to know, frequency distribution, class intervals, histograms, frequency polygon, um, cumulative frequency, skewness, and don't worry about kurtosis. Uh, you, you'll read about it in the chapter, so you can go ahead and take a look there. Uh, thank you guys again. Chapter 5 video will be up here shortly. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to call me um, or email me. I am around. Uh, my office hours are Tuesday and Thursdays, um, but I'm pretty flexible if you guys just let me know ahead of time. Thank you.